everything else, the, the fight matters tomorrow. So, you know, I said to the UFC, I, I, I'll be in for weigh-ins and the fight. I don't really care about anything else, I'm chilling. <laughs> it's probably easier in some ways, you didn't have to mess with us all week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what, talk to us about the cut that you did have. I mean, how big did you ultimately get, and I mean, how much did you have to cut, and I mean, is this the right weight class for you? Yeah, I t I've misjudged it a little tiny bit this time, because obviously you get ahead of yourself, so I know some guys in the past who've moved up and then still missed weight, because you think, oh, now, you know, it, I've got how many ever kilos to gain. I didn't do that. I wanted to stay around what I would walk at, at well, which was massive anyway. But fight week, I knew going in six, seven kilos for me is perfect. With the with more energy levels, you know, for welterweight, it was three, four weeks out. I'm, I'm, I'm practically starving myself and walking around with no energy, n n n no motivation to train. You know what I mean? So the only little bit of lack of energy I had was halfway through the weight cut last night. You know, I was like, oh, I could feel my energy gone because no calories. But this week I've been on fire. You know, I've been, I've, I've had a training week. So this is this is a good weight, you know, and, and I'm happy with the cut with everything. I'm happy with this week. I'm just so happy. I know you're not much for, you know, paying attention to excuses or anything, but I got to ask you, the weight cut for Kelvin, the weigh in this morning, um, have you had a chance to review the tape, the photos, everything that's out there? And, and what do you think? Lay it to rest. Did the man put his elbow on, on Rafael Cordero obviously, or not? Obviously, I've seen it. Every, everyone's been sending me it. You know, uh, it, listen, if he did, if he didn't, it, it doesn't matter to me because my coach told me, you know, a long time ago, any man over 70 kilos should be able to defend himself against any man, especially in the octagon. So for me, I, I'm not looking into it yet. I've seen the video. Did he or didn't he? I, I couldn't give two fucks. I mean, it's a fight. Five, if he was five or ten pounds over, if he was actually on weight, it just doesn't change my world in any way. You know, I'm here for what's fair. I'm here for what's right. I'm here to take what's mine fairly. I'm here to earn what's mine fairly. I don't want no money. I don't want nothing. I just want to fucking fight. Nice. Last thing for me, Darren. I mean, uh, listen, I know you've always said you just want to be known as the greatest fighter alive, and, and that means beating everybody, but... There are no easy fights in the UFC, but there are certainly easier fights than this one. I mean, what is it about this fight? Every, I think everybody thinks you're crazy for, for taking this and, and maybe not taking, quote unquote, you know, a warm up fight. That's why they're not fighters, because they think I'm crazy. Uh, to me, it's the norm. You know, uh, I've said, he, in my opinion, he's, you know, he's top three in middleweight. He, he, you look at the last fight he had with the, the now current champion, Israel. I, I got in this to fight the best and and there was one little opportunity there to fight Kelvin and, and you know I, I'm taking that, that road I'm not taking the high road to anywhere else you know what I mean I'm taking that road I, I'm taking a big chance that you know people oh this could be you know a lot of people 90% of the people are writing me off this could be his third loss I, I, I've said it I just don't really give a fuck uh, Darren just down here um Obviously, Kelvin is a former welterweight as well, so how do you see yourself matching up with him in there, kind of both physically and stylistically? I think it's a bit new now for me, you know, being at middleweight, he's been here a while and he's, he's obviously feeling the difference in, in moving up with these bigger guys. But, you know, if you look at me, you look at my posture, I, I, I'm a natural middleweight. I'm probably not the biggest right now. Uh, I don't want to be the biggest. You know, I started out as a welterweight in MMA and I wanted to finish as a welter, but it just wasn't possible no more. Every fight, building more muscle, every fight, a bigger weight cut. It was just, it was just not good for me. So now at middleweight and, 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 you know, I'm fighting one of the best, I think. I think it's more brand new to me, but I think I'm going to, I think I, I size up well against him. I know he's smaller than me, but, he, you know, he's obviously beat all these guys in the middleweight because he's got something, you know, he's talented, he's strong. He can take a shot. I, I think it's a good matchup. And you said before, previously, that you didn't want to bulk up too much. You wanted to keep the speed. So how do you go about doing that? I don't think. I just think don't get too ahead of yourself. Like he, 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 this, this wake up was fine. I want the next one to be even better because I don't want to be like 
eating more than necessary just for the sake of it. Obviously, you know, it's 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 common knowledge. Fighters over weekend will will pig out a little bit more, but you know, I just want to keep on a, a good diet, good healthy portions, keep my body healthy, and and just have the minimal cut that that is possible. And you know, obviously this week, a lot of things. You know, maybe it was a little bit more difficult because I was probably holding about two kilos of water off my flight, and you know, I was a little bit jet lagged. I'm still jet lagged, but you know, all is well. And how do you see the extra weight uh, impacting your performance on Saturday? I think I'll have more power. I think I'll have more power, and and, and I th I just think that I, if I can keep all the same qualities from welterweight, that that's good for me. So keep the speed, keep the power, a little bit more power, keep the movement. You know, and I'll be faster than all these guys. So that, that, that's like the plan, really. Hey, Darren. I think before this fight, everyone thought a good win would put you at the top of middleweight. Now that Paulo Costa's apparently injured, do you think a solid, maybe even a finish, puts you against Israel Adesanya next? Yeah. <laughs> if it does, you know, uh, great. I don't feel like I would deserve it. But who, who, am I, who am I to say? I remember when I fought for the welterweight title, I didn't campaign for that, and they put me in. You know, I, I want to, as I said, I want to aim what's mine, and I want to do it fairly. You know, I feel like a lot of guys are in front of me. I would take the Israel fight in my hometown, Liverpool, Anfield, for the fight itself, for, for the way me and him match up, for, for the, the location, for what it would be, for what it would be for my legacy and his. You know, so... I'd be Kelvin tomorrow, you know, maybe there could be talks of it. But I, it wouldn't be for the belt for me. It would be for the, you know, it would be to fight him. Him as, as a fighter, obviously I know the belt would be on the line, but I feel like there's a lot more guys in front of me. I'm new, I've got to make my mark and make my stamp on this division. Alternately, if it's not you, there is talk of him fighting Yoel Romero. I know in the past you've perhaps mentioned that Yoel's a bit of an intimidating guy. Have you thought about the fact that now you are in middleweight, you may actually have to fight Yoel Romero? I'll try and avoid that fight, maybe. <laughs> I no, I, I'm like a, my wrestling coach is like a massive fan of Yola, and, and I am as well. You know, I, I follow him on, on the social medias, and you know, he's, he's just a, he's just a strong, solid guy at his age still, and he's a solid fighter. Don't get me wrong, if if Dana come to me and said fight him on, you know, two days' notice, I'd still fight him. But you know, that 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 in my opinion is a, a tough, tough fight for anyone in, in any weight. Yola's a tough guy. If, uh, if Israel and Yoel do end up fighting, how do you see that fight actually playing out? Do you think your boy can, can pull away with it? Yeah, I just, I just, I can't look past this. A lot of people, uh, it's mad because even after he beat Whittaker, there was just so much talk of this next guy will beat him. You, you can't keep saying that when the guy keeps beating everyone. Then you, you have to step. I remember before Conor fought Jose Aldo and, and I doubted him a little bit. And then when he done that to Jose, I was like, I'd never doubt that guy ever again. And it's sort of the same thing with uh, Israel. You know, how can we keep doubting this guy when he just keeps beating all these guys and now he's the, the middleweight champion? So I think it'd be a tough fight. And as I said, I'm a big fan of Yol. But I, I just can't look past Israel uh, against him. I just think he, he, would, he would edge out a win. I don't think he'd stop him. I think Yol's made of some stuff, like steel or something. But, you know, uh, I think he would edge it out. I really do. Thanks, Daniel. Darren, down to your right, right here. Yeah. You're right, man. Um, a couple of weeks ago, you said that you weren't letting the magnitude of the occasion get to you and that you'd reflect on it in years to come. But now that you're here in the Big Apple, in the most famous arena in the world, is it getting to you a little bit? Are you taking it in a little bit? Yeah, I, I think it gets to everyone. I, I'm taking it in. It's, uh, it's surreal for me, you know. Uh, not only am I fighting at MSG uh, on probably one of the best cards of, of, of the year, I'm co-maining co it, you know, so I've got, I've got to step back and chill and that's all I mean, I'm, I'm just chilling and taking it in, I'm not, I've got no pent up energy or anger, I'm just chilling, I'm just looking forward to, to everything. And I know you touched on it a, a bit uh, before there, uh, the prolonged travel issues and now a lot of people seem to be doubting you a bit more, what's your message to them? Uh, it's all bullshit. It's, it doesn't mean anything. You can tell you, you as a fighter, you can tell yourself that it means something, I'm jet lagged or I had a hard weight cut or I've got this type of problem with an injury, but at the end of the day, it's all bullshit. It's, you know, if you're here to fight, you're here to fight, you're okay. 
You know, I'm carrying injuries. The weight cut was a little bit hard. I'm jet lagged. I'm here to fight. No excuses, no nothing. Go in there and fight and give your best. And that's it. And to people who are doubting me, just just keep doubting me. You know, I I just couldn't give a fuck. I just couldn't give two two fucks. And final one for me. Uh, what did you make of your face off with Kelvin? And did you see anything when you, when you stared into his eyes? I don't like to look into it, but I just see a confident guy there who, who knows he, he can beat anyone on earth. Same same as me, you know. After two losses, yeah, your confidence does dip a bit. But when I'm stood in front of another man, I know I've got the potential to beat him. So, you know, I think he's here and ready. I'm here and ready. That, that that's it. That that's it. Let's let's make a let's make a great fight. Cheers, man. Thanks. Hi, Darren, up here. So I know you mentioned that you don't really care that much about Gastelum using, let's say, questionable techniques to make weight this morning. <laughs> but you're telling me that you were here, jet lagged made weight the honest way, and there's no part of you that's at the very least irritated that he used controversial ways to make weight when you did it the honest way. It's, it just is what it is. It, it, if he did, if he didn't, we'll never know. We'll, we'll never know, you know. It's just, it's that. It, <laughs> if it was like we were talking 20, 30 pounds, I'd be like, come on. You're taking the fucking piss, ten, ten pounds. But you know, if if he has cheated, it's only going to be a pound or two or what, three. It's well, Jennifer Maya missed weight. She pays twenty five percent of her purse to her opponent, and yeah. you know that could potentially have been you getting twenty five percent of Kelvin's. I purse. think I am getting twenty five percent of it, but I don't want it. <laughs> it's it's not mine to take. It's just give it to someone, give it back to him, whatever. It's a as I've just said, I'm here for what's mine, fairly. I want to earn, earn what's mine, fairly. I want to go home and look at my paycheck and know that I earned that, fairly, even though the government take a fucking shitload of cash, which I don't think's right. But that's it. G give it to the, the, the heavyweight's uh, da daughter who's missing. You know, help, help a good cause, give it back to him. He's got miles to feed. For me, it's indifferent. I, I just couldn't give a shit. All right, and a final one for me. You mentioned uh, Israel Adesanya. I think, yeah, he's really taking the MMA world by storm. No one's been able to solve that puzzle yet. That could be a future opponent for you. What do you think is the key to defeating Adesanya? Uh, truthfully, right right now, I don't know. He's beating everyone, but, you know, uh, you've got to go in there and stick to your game plan. I know I'm, I'm a talented individual. I know I've got the skills to beat anyone. I truly, I truly know that. It's just whether there in the moment, you, you know, you, 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 you do that, you, you, you do what you, you're there, you're meant to, to do there, not get dragged out of it, not get dragged into another game plan. So, you know, uh, I think there's things there to beat him, but right now, he's unbeaten. So, it's, it's like Floyd Mayweather said, I remember Oscar saying that he gave the, uh, the remedy to Canelo, but how can he give the remedy when Floyd beat Oscar? There was no remedy. He retired unbeaten. There was no remedy ever to be Floyd. So right now it looks like there's no remedy to beat Israel. You know, he's he's there, he's beating everyone. What what can I say? Darren over here. In the back. Calvin's never been knocked out in his career. Do you look at that challenge and does that add a little bit more to this fight, knowing that you could be the first guy to finish him? Uh, if I hit, yeah, at World well, Weight or Middleweight, I've got serious power in my hands. You know, people have seen that, you know, uh, and he's been on a lot of wars. He, 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 he's, he's fucking Mexican, isn't he? You know, they're Mexicans. you got to watch out for them. <laughs> you know, look at what Andy Ruiz did to Joshua. They, you know, they just love eating Snickers and, <laughs> and fucking punching people in the face. So, you know, I, I think he's a tough guy to, to knock out, but I think I've, I've got the tools. You know, I, I, carry, I carry serious power at, at, at Welter at, and at middle. I'm, I'm sure my power will be more now at middle, so we'll see. I think it's possible, definitely possible. Does the strategy change at all just because he is so durable? I think you just have, to, yeah, yeah, you know, he's, he's tough and he's fit. So you, you, you have to know going in there, whether it be three or five rounds, you've got to be fifth for the five and the three, and you've got to, you've got to know that he's going to take a lot of hits. He, he keeps coming, you know, keeps coming. He, he'll, he'll try and impose his will. So you've just got to be headstrong with that, impose your will, be fit, that's important. And, you know, one will be winner. 
You talked about Israel Adesanya. What was your reaction to him beating Robert Whitaker when you watched that fight? Just didn't expect it. I just thought that because of what I seen from Robert fighting Yol twice, I thought, ah, you know, uh, Israel can possibly win this, but it's going to be tough with Whitaker the way the role he's on, and then and then he does die. That's what I mean. Like right now, where it stands, there is no remedy to beat Israel. So why is everyone doubting? Why is everyone keep saying the next guy? Until he gets beat, let, let the guy just fly, let, let him fly, you know what I mean? It's, people are so quick to forget things, you know, I'm coming off two losses, but what about before that when I was just destroying everyone in front of me, you know, in and out the UFC? And now, I, I, you know, I see sometimes people say, you know, why is Till in the UFC? That, that doesn't make no sense because I'm coming off two losses. It's just people, people are so easy to like jump on something and criticize and, and say stuff. And last one for me, you're wearing the Knicks jersey. Are you a basketball fan at all? I've, I've watched the bare minimum. You know, I know I'll probably get a... I like the honesty. A, a few haters for saying that, but... Uh, you know, I, I know LeBron James, that's it. But I just I got a presence of MSG. It's got, got my name on the back, so... You know, uh, it's just it's a nice gift that I'll get put in, in a frame in my house. And, and I'll, I'll remember all this. So I appreciate that from the garden. Hey, Darren, right here. Uh, yesterday at Media Day, Kelvin told me that he heard in between camps that you got a little big. With the late week and, and the whole situation, do you believe the way the whole weigh-ins played out today that it actually benefited you and worked to your advantage when in turn the whole talk was about weight cutting and you coming off the yeah. plane before? Yeah, uh, you know, uh, it's just like, it's like Chinese whispers rumors, isn't it? It's just... Uh, you can't do nothing about it. It's like someone's opinion of yourself. You shouldn't get wound up over it because there's nothing you can do to change their opinion. So don't stress over it. So it's, you know, it, it actually worked in my favor. Uh, this week, I, as I said, I was just chilling. I didn't have to do anything. No one was waking me up. I was waking up when I wanted, training when I wanted, going to bed when I wanted, and just enjoying life. So, I, as I said, I think the only problem, if there was going to be a problem, would be maybe... The, the the energy levels and the water retaining coming off the flight, which the doctor looked at me and he was like, he could tell I was holding a lot of water. And at that time I'd cut my water off and he was telling me to drink, you know, to push the salts out and that. But, you know, I just got on with it. The, the, the last kilo might have, it was a little bit of a struggle. Like when I say struggle, it was like, oh, I have to do an extra 10 minutes in, in, in the sweats. That's that. I could show you some struggles and I'm sure you've all seen the videos of when I was, make them welterweight, you know, they're what you call struggle. So I've, I've been through that. So for me, an extra one or two kilos right now at this weight is no problem. I know the fight week didn't go as planned, but now that you have made the weight cut at middleweight... It did, it did go planned, <laughs> as I planned it. <laughs> Do you believe that uh, middleweight is going to be your permanent home? I hope so. I, I, you know, I, I feel healthy. as a, I matured a little bit as a human being and as a fighter, you know, instead of absolutely trying to kill myself and my health to get to a weight that it was just not possible anymore you know now i've come up and if i can just be a little bit more clever not not bulk up too big and just stay at a nice weight where it's a few kilos cut you know you've still got energy the day before weigh-ins and stuff like that and, and, that, and that that's the way i'm going that's the road i'm going there no here um does, I, know, I know moving up a weight class, you're doing this because, you know, you want a, a healthier option for you, but does part of it ex excite you because it seems that 185 is more striker-dominated? If you look at the former champion, um, if, if you look at the current champion, Israel Adesanya as well, they're strikers, whereas you look at 170, yeah. there's a lot of wrestlers. Does part of that add to it, the fact that there, there's exciting styles and, and it's more striking base up there? Yeah, most definitely, but also, at, at Welter, it would have been good to fight the, some, some of these guys like the champ, and Colby and stuff like that because the, the wrestling abilities and I'd love to see how I fare against them, you know. I know I lost in my uh, welterweight world title fight against Tyron, but I lost because of the striking. You know, he, he he tried a few takedown attempts and, you know, he wasn't able to do it. And I think he's a little bit of a different wrestler from them two guys I've just mentioned, but that excites me as well because put onto the test who the true martial artist is, you know, this is what mixed martial arts is about. But yeah, there's a, there's a lot of strikers and y'all at this weight. So uh, 
Yeah, it's exciting to inflict pain and receive pain. It's what excites me. 